Okay everybody, welcome. It's been asked of me based on my previous video to this one that I just uploaded some footage of Mortal Kombat 4 using the real arcade hardware. Somebody asked me how I captured it. Uh, more than one person has asked me how I captured it or how I go about doing that. And I figured I'll just show a video here so you guys can uh, emulate what I'm doing and see if it can work for you guys. But basically what I'm using is I'm using my a standard regular JAMA test rig and I'm using a CGA to VGA converter and I'm sending the VGA from the converter to a video capture card on my PC and it's uh, I believe it's Aver Media or Ava Media, Media Center or something or other uh, I don't know the specifics actually it's a game broadcaster HD is the video capture card that I have it's a Aver Media game broadcaster HD yeah that's it so Google that, you'll see what I'm using, but I'm running the VGA from the converter to that, and I'm running the audio from the JAMA harness and, and the, the game boards directly to the line input on the PC as well. So that's how I capture the video and the audio. But the way it's hooked up is you have your standard JAMA connection, but it hooks to this little interface board that comes with the converter. Now, this is one of the newer converters. They had some converters a while back that had older firmware on them, and the older firmware was not working with the Mortal Kombat boards and the boards that use 53 kilohertz refresh rate. But they have a new board out that has updated firmware and now they do work. But if you guys go and order one of these from JammaBoards.com, uh, I believe they're 35, 40 bucks. Uh, JammaBoards.com has them, but they don't come with these anymore. So what you have to do is these boards require a 5 volt power, 5 volts in ground, and then it has a connector for your red, green, blue ground and sync. Because these boards don't come with these interface boards anymore, what you're going to have to do is actually take your red, green, blue ground and sync and splice them into your JAMA harness. And then you have to take your f uh, 5 volts in, in ground and plug them into your power supply at some, part, some point along the way. You can probably splice them into the JAMA harness as well. But uh, I was fortunate enough to, when I first got the initial release of these, that it came with one of these interface boards where you just plug the red, green, blue ground and sync and the and the 5 volts onto the uh, pins here and it interfaces with the JAMA harness and powers and everything up the uh, the converter so I did, I did want to mention that so if you see when you see this here if you order one you're not going to get this this is an older part but um, you get to splice in your wires when if you get one but anyway uh, I digress so I have the JAMA board here running through the adapter which sends the video lines and the power to the converter uh, it still powers up and, and shows on the monitor. Uh, this is just an interface basically by using this thing, which yours will still be an interface when you splice them in. But So this will all still power up normally, and then it takes the CGA input from the red, green, blue ground and sync, converts it to VGA, and sends it off on its way over to my computer over here to the right. So let me go ahead and fire this up. You'll see it functioning. So there's Tekken 2. Now I'll get the camera set up on the computer over here and I'll show you how I operate the software. Okay, so here's the proprietary software that comes with the Aver Media Game Broadcaster HD. And when you get everything installed and up and running, you just hit Capture. Well, first you're going to go to Settings and select how you want to capture, what type of video, and whether you want MPEG or anything. But I have everything set up right now to capture MPEG 2. Uh, 60 frames a second, something like that, but I'm not going to go into all that. You guys can figure that out, I'm sure, on your own. But when you get everything set up, you go to Capture, and I, there you go. You can choose whether you want to have HDMI input or, or D-Sub, which is VGA, But so I have it on VGA, and there you go. As you can see, Tekken 2. And the actual game board is still running here. So there it is on the test rig, and there it is on the screen for the computer, so that's how I do it. So I'm going to turn this off here, and it's going to go into a freeze the, the screen, but I'm going to unplug Tekken 2, and I'm going to plug in Killer Instinct. I 
just turned it on. You get a bunch of Chinese le Chinese lettering. You heard the tone. There's Killer Instinct. Now each, each game has its own onboard video hardware and Killer Instinct is a bit darker so you can see there how dark that is. It's also dark on the actual screen itself. Darker than you'd expect it to be. In person it looks darker. But So you can see it's capturing Killer Instinct just fine. But when you encounter a problem like this, the converter board has onboard controls. So when you press the button that says menu, it brings up controls where you can picture, geometry, display, language exit. You go to picture, and you can choose brightness, contrast, saturation, sharpness, things like that. So um, when each, depending on which game you select, it has different onboard hardware, so you're going to have to change your brightness and contrast settings and your vertical position and horizontal size and things like that. All that stuff is done through the menu on the converter. The converter, turn a light on here, the converter has four buttons, up, down, auto, SW, and menu. Menu is what you press to bring up the uh, well, your menu, of course, but it, like the how to adjust the, the screen position and brightness and contrast. The auto button, let's say you, you turn the machine on or turn your game on, and the screen's a bit, um, it's not synced up as, as it should be. You press that auto button, the LED will blink a few times, and it'll resync itself. Uh, and then SW cycles through whether you want to have your RGB input or component. Um, yeah, component input or VGA input. So it'll, uh, the SW switch here will cycle through those. Then, of course, up and down and menu. So that's how that functions. So, but as you can see, Killer Instinct here is capturing just fine. But the, oh, I do, I do want to mention one thing here. Um, you see these little pots here? Those are red, green, blue adjustment. Each game, like I said, is going to be different, so you have to go through there and adjust your red, green, and blue. You can either find a happy medium for all the different games you want to try and capture, or what I do is, because I want the best picture I can get when I capture, is I have to adjust those. Focus up there, buddy. I have to adjust those every time I change the game out to get the best picture I want. Um, that's just one of the downfalls because each game is different. Each hardware on each game is different. So I did want to point that out. But again, as you can see, Killer Instinct is capturing just fine. Um, it looks a lot, all blue and it's dark because I haven't gone through and readjusted the converter board. But you can see Killer Instinct's working. Audio. All that jazz. So I'm going to turn it off. Currently, the converter is set up, adjusted for color and size and picture and everything for MK4. So let me turn that on. Because that's still adjusted from the last video I made. And here's MK4. That's your Chinese lettering. And there you go. Mortal Kombat 4. Now... You have a button over here that says live, you pick you pick live and it full screens it for you. So there's the computer. There's a the test rig. So it work, it works pretty well, I gotta say. So what you're looking at now is off my computer screen. And that looks pretty damn good if you ask me. 
So it's all based on how you adjust your settings on your converter. Alright gang, so that should uh, answer your questions. Anything else you want to know, feel free to ask and thanks for watching.